Hey guys, we uh we've got Kyle Marsham with us, and uh, we're kind of excited. We're always excited to be around Kyle because he's kind of always got something cool going on, or he just has brands we love, right? Um, exactly. so um, it might just be the association with Sasha because every time I'm with Sasha or you or you and Sasha, um, I get Poco chips. So maybe that's the emotional tie. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but um, in any case, we. We thought we we had uh, Kyle on today for the fast thought because Kyle's got something new that he's working on <clears throat> that uh, we wanted to talk about. Yeah, yeah, go for it, man. Tell us what's yeah, going yeah. on. Well, the feelings uh, mutual, right? I, I remember the first time I met you guys. It was actually I went up to Sasha and I was like, Sasha, can you introduce me to them? And then we met at the show, and now yeah. you know it's fun hanging out with you guys. So I appreciate you having me on. It's it's uh, it's pretty cool to be yeah. on the other end of it now because I uh, I'm such an yeah. No editing of everything exactly. Right? Yeah, just have yeah. to show up. Um, yeah, so software to do right. Uh, we we made an announcement on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. I introduced it to you guys. See, like last year seemed like a lifetime ago, um, and we're really just trying to fix a, a problem that uh, my founder and I, um, his name's David Sharafi. Um, you know, we sat down and 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 there's this platform overload problem and collaboration and transparency problem that we wanted to solve, right? So, so normally when we introduce to do, we kind of just ask the the brand broker sales agency how many different platforms they're using and it's usually you know four five six and we're talking google drive salesforce a crm they're they're kind of just moving between all of these platforms and there's no consistency so we're like what if we could build software on top of that and really focus on three fundamental pillars right well i think we can all agree that collaboration is really important but at the end of the day what does collaboration really mean right it can mean you know communicating or or you know being strategic about communicating, right? Um, and then the the second one is transparency. You know, I've been in the broker world through my family's business for a number of years, and and a lot of the time, you know, our brand partners just want to know what's going on with their business. And it's not that we couldn't get them the information; it's that we had to go through so many platforms to get it to them, <laughs> right? So there was this 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 problem. Um, so we, we created to do, we wanted to create a software that streamlined communication that really fostered true collaboration, but providing transparency across everything. So in the, in the kind of basic emerging brands model, you can log in, you can access a full retailer database, Canada and the U S and you kind of just have the basic building blocks for a, a, a business in CPG in the grocery natural products industry from, you know, a retailer dashboard from category reviews, right? We've we've scanned um, the industry and we have about 75 different category reviews on the dashboard. We've done the heavy lifting. So you can literally go, oh, when is, you know, the salty snack review at Whole Foods and it'll pop up and you can see them across all 75 for, you know, the same price as, you know, the basic to the the, the platinum, um, you know, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month package. Um, and it, we just wanted to really arm the small brands with a lot of these resources, but also, um, you know, uh, harness that communication. So, you know, you, you link your broker, you log in, right. A brand has access, a broker has access, a sales agent has access, a, a consultant, and it, it's, it's synergy across task management, right. One of the biggest things, um, that we focused on around this idea of collaboration is tasks, right? We're always doing so many tasks, tasks this. I have papers all over the place where I did, now I used to do. But, um, and then so we did that, we built the, 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 the bones of the platform. And then we're like, how do we take this one step further? Wouldn't it be cool to build some automation and notifications around tasks, right? And then if we can construct you know, specific tasks as they relate to our industry, right? Like new item listings, listing opportunities, category review, meeting, demo, whatever, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, it would make that kind of learning curve and that efficiency portion of it a little bit better, right? And if, you know, and then we started using, we started diving in and it was amazing how much more, you know, efficient we were becoming, how much more collaborative we were coming. And then, you know, when you dive into software, the the it's kind of endless what you can 
what you can really do with it, right? You think about, you know, you guys are in the industry actively in the industry. If you think about everything you're doing, right? How could you tweak it with a little bit of software? So that's kind of what we do every day. It's like, oh, you know, we want to uh, build a notification sales automation piece around a task or around a meeting or, you know, the category review thing is probably the coolest thing I found is you click the category review you like and we can set notifications. So if you go, oh, Whole Foods or Longos or Loblaws is reviewing Salty Snacks in, on January 5th, I can set the notifications. So seven days, two weeks, I'm going to get an automatic email and everyone in my ecosystem that's that pertains to that business is going to get notifications saying that you can do it manually if you want. Like You can go set emails, and, but who wants to do that? It's going to take a lot of time. We've done all the work for you and then you just have to click a button. Right? So little little things like that, we've just... Yeah, they would just try to make it easier for everybody and turn into a, a pretty fun project. Wow. That's cool. I, I have questions. Kenny, you have Go a question. Can I ask? Yeah, right <laughs> it um, I guess the, the first question I've got, because I um, it does sound really cool. I, I think the first response usually from brands will be, this is great. It's probably really nice for big guys or guys that are bigger than me so i i feel like category reviews and things like that are, are critically important to little brands in particular right because big brands know they kind of have a pulse right because they're in with buyers a little bit more often so having this stuff do you find um like what if i'm a if i'm if I'm a emerging brand and I'm starting to get to retailers, at, at kind of what size should I be thinking about this? Like, is this something that everybody should be using? Um, or is there kind of a sweet spot for size? If I was starting a brand, even if I was starting in the industry or when I did started 10 years ago and I had something like this, it would have made my life so much easier. I would say before you go to market, you should, be at least using a platform like this or something like it, right? If you go the route that most brands have done, you know, you've had to um, spend a lot of money in developing yourself or using platforms that allow you to develop internally. I'm not going to say the name of those platforms, um, but it kind of does everything for you, right? If you're launching a brand, you're like, okay, how do I get this into my favorite grocery store? You might not even know how many grocery stores are out there. Um, and what's required of you. So you can go on here, you can literally have access to every single retailer across Canada. You could go, you know, click, and then you'd see all the tabs uh, that are required for managing a business. So you have, okay, category reviews for that's one component. Okay, this is a promo calendar planning tool. Oh, I need promotions. I can't remember how many small pre-market brands don't even know that they have to promote with retailers. Right. Or what's what's involved with getting a sales tag um, in store. Right. So all those little things kind of come to life in this. And then as you grow, there's a you know, there's a listing uh, distribution grid tracker. So every time you add items to a retailer through our, the uh, new listing opportunities tab, it tracks in your distribution grid. So now you're kind of, um, you know, getting some data and watching your brand grow. Um, but, yeah, I would say it's kind of built better for the smaller brands, but then because we've thought about that transparency and collaboration piece where you can connect your broker, consultant, marketing agency um, to it, it can also scale with you. And then the other side of it is we've also done it for the entire US market. So we found that in Canada is a little different because it's, it's national, most of the brokers are national. Um, it, because of the geography, it's a little bit different, but in the US, some brands have like four or five brokers yeah and i'm like i'm like okay how do you manage those four or five brokers they're like well, i don't know it's kind of just all over the place i mean this one platform two platform three platform i'm like you don't kind of try to streamline it to your way of doing it and they're like no they do it their way right and it's chaotic i showed a, a brand recently who manages a bunch of u.s brokers and they manage all of canada she almost started crying with with the, the like how much time i'm going to save her and how efficient she was going to be um with even just reporting back to her boss on information right so it's you can it, going back to my point is you can go in you click the retailer and and then connect it to that broker 
So you could have you can manage ten brokers with in one region, and it's really organized by by customer. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Small, medium, large. I think it's 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 really nicely suited for any size. And the smaller ones just get a lot out of it because they don't know what they don't know. Yeah, no, I love that. I feel like you either have a very well developed Excel system <laughs> that you <laughs> between Excel, Post-it notes, your Google contact list, and your email That's inbox, cool. right? Um, but this allows you to be able to actually see things laid out properly, be able to communicate with partners, not have to remember or, you know, because we've all done it, right? We all sort by, you sort by your inbox to figure out where things are or what you've got to do or what's left outstanding that you're going to miss stuff, right? Like, so this way allows you to keep them all connected. Can, can we, can we pick a little bit at, so you've talked a couple of times about the sharing bit with brokers. What, kinds of things are you you know because i think that's um transparency and information and not transparency as in you're not being forthcoming i actually think it's the other way it's you've got so much information to share that a lot of times you get to a point where you've just forgotten right like i've got reams and reams of marketing stuff that i want to share i've forgotten i saw kyle today so i sent it to kyle i saw kenny on my way out the door i said i'll send it to kenny and i forget right and then i see Peter, while I'm walking down the street or I'm on the phone with Peter, I send it to Peter or I send <clears throat> half of it because I can find half to Peter. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've got three different people that you've sent three different sets of information to, right? So I see a lot of value in those sort of things where, you know, even in between Kenny and I, right? There are moments where he'll go, do you get that thing? I'm like, what thing? On what channel? Like, did you, did you send it by WhatsApp? Did you send it by text? Did you send it by google chat or email and which email right like um yeah so if you don't mind elaborating a little yeah it's a serious problem it drives me nuts right because i'm in the same situation and and you know as we build it out more we're, we're finding more ways of, of sharing but you know maybe not oversharing or or whatever that looks like but um you know if you think about a task right if you're um, if you're the brand founder, if you're and you've hired an agency or you have sales reps internally that are executing on your business, how do you really track how they're doing or what they're doing or if you know um, you need to get involved? So, you know, let's use a category review um, as an example, right? If a sales rep, broker, whoever is going and trying to um, execute a category review. There's a lot of moving pieces. You need to coordinate samples. There's probably a presentation that you have to put together. You want to pull some sales data. That's like 15 emails, a lot of coordination. Within to do, you could go set a task or you could assign all the people this task, call it category review or new item presentation, whatever's whatever makes sense for your business. And then within there, you could write all the requirements, the description of that task, set a deadline. You could set multiple tasks with multiple deadlines as an overarching, you know, category review bulk of tasks. Um, and then you can open them and add notes or jump in when necessary, add files. So now you've really um, um, closed in on a specific item. Um, and then you're kind of, as long as you go in and update it, as you would have to mandate right through, through leadership or through, um, you know, that level of consistency, but you, you know, the next day or a week later, you wanted to, you know, see how that specific task or whatever was being executed, you'd, you'd get all the information. And that's just one area. If I'm, you know, go into a specific retailer and they've updated a category review or they've asked me to change a promotion, I'll go into to do that specific retailer's dashboard. I'll just go in and change the dates on the category review and update the promotion. And it prompts an update into the feed and into the main feed dashboard so that you as the founder or as the manager can go in and see that those updates have been made. I haven't had to email anybody. I haven't had to do anything. It just automatically happened. Same with new listings, right? New, new listings is an exciting moment for every, any brand. The way you do it in to-do, you just go into that retailer, add a new listing, add all the criteria, and then it'll just prompt a update for you um in the near future it'll be like a hey you've got a new listing type of thing like happy birthday right type of thing but uh yeah anything you do prompts an update so everyone's constantly kept in the loop um if you're 
if you're assigning deadlines and you haven't actioned it, you'll continue to be notified until you actioned it, um, which is kind of good in some situations. You can turn it off um, or, and turn it back on. Um, yeah, what else? Sample requests, right? If you think about, um, or your question was about transparency and sharing information. So yeah, anything you kind of do is shared and you can dive into it. Like we were doing a demo the other day for a brand um, that we do business on and, uh, on the Marsham side. And I just pulled up and like there was live action um, on the platform. Like there was new listings, one there was a promotion that changed, someone secured a, an end cap. And I just like was doing a live demo and she's like, holy crap. She's like two new listings and you secured an end cap. She was so surprised. And like, if you think about how you would have uh, gone about getting that information prior, it's multiple emails, they would have had to update a, uh, a grid in Google Drive or OneDrive and send you the link to that thing to update you. It, it, it just wouldn't happen, right? And it's not about the the fact that we can't get you the information. We're not doing it. It's just it's not efficient. I think sort of that's the, that's sort of the kicker, though. It's that all this stuff is out there. Like we all have this information somewhere, and that's the problem. It's the somewhere part, right? Whether it's buried in an email thread or into a chat thread or into whatever thread, or the world's based on an Excel sheet or a Google sheet or some sheet in a drive, maybe not a drive. Like it's, it's. I think it's always the fundamental issue. And like you said, there are tools out there. It's trying to find something easy, right? And something that has a little bit more robustness that it's, I don't have to venture out of it. Like I, I do like the fact that you can see, you know, your your pitch periods, you know, when, when they're planogramming, when they're thinking of that. And yeah. then potentially working the listings around that, getting that information out. Guys, here's the, you know, they're doing coffee and tea. Screw the coffee on this one. Let's just do the tea. Here's the skis we want to go with. Bang, 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 bang. Send the task. Like, get it all figured out in one spot. Because I think mean, that's fundamentally the problem. I mean, Phil and I lose shit all the time. There's only two of us. Right? It's because I, well, mostly me, because I can't remember which freaking, I don't know where I put it. Remember? We were Somewhere. just doing it on the weekend. We're, we're working on something uh, on I a said, longer I this thing. Where did I put those notes? He <laughs> still doesn't know what I'm talking about. I said I did like lots of notes in something. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Somewhere else there yeah. was notes. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's cool. Um, I really love it. So so what's it called? Uh, to do. It's it's the to do.com. Someone owns okay. to do.com and it's like crazy expensive. So we're like, screw it. We're doing the to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. trouble. Maybe if it's successful, we'll buy it down the road. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, no, the, the other thing I wanted to mention is we've, we've, we've partnered with two companies to provide more um, access, right? One being Shelf Graham. Bram's been on your podcast a number of times. That's a good, um, that's and we're good. working with him Love to us. get a direct API integration of Shelf Graham cool. on to do. So when you're in a specific retailer's dashboard, you click merchandising. And then you'll see like maybe your top four stores or the top four stores in that banner just okay. to get a, a really high level look at what that planogram looks like. And then it'll just be like a four week re revolving door. And then within that merchandising piece, we also piece, we also made a self-serve portion where you can like, oh, I'm in a store. Like, I don't know how many pictures of freaking products and end caps I have on my phone, but what do I do with them? They end up on my phone or te text to somebody or whatever. Yeah. So in this situation, you can like send it to to do or open to do on your phone, save it there by store. And then you kind of have both perspectives. Um, and then the second one is, is uh, spins. So we've been trying to get access to spins data for, for almost a, a year now. And we've partnered with them. So every brand that signs on to, to, to do, will get almost 120 different data points um twice a year um and we're working on the api so right now it's just we input the data into like a a, a frame on to do um but very soon you'll have a direct api integration for those two reports twice a year and then if you want to if you want to go further and get data you can just like partner directly with spins through to do um and there's like a discount uh plan and that's really goes back to that emerging brands thing where they don't have access to data. So it's high level, right? It's like category, it's, it's um, channel, it's uh, segment. It's not like it's more than uh, they ever competitive. Have. Exactly. Right. And then the other thing people have been asking is well, like spins doesn't offer anything in Canada, but it still gives you a very good 
perspective on what's happening in the market. And a lot of that stuff does apply to other markets. So um, we saw a lot of value and I like looking at the data. Um, so yeah, everyone who signs on gets those two pulls included cool. in their subscription. That's pretty cool. That's, that's yeah. kind of a big deal, right? Like if, uh, so, so for the emerging brand, right? Like you got to think of it this way is you, what you used to do by hand manually, right? Is you want to know what's going on. You got to hit every store. So every store that you ever want to go to, if you want to see what's happening with your product, that's where you got to, you just got to keep going to the store. So you think of the 18,000 things I got to do every day, I got to go to a store. I got to see what's happening. So Shelfgram cuts that right out of your day. You can literally jump in and see what's going on, right? We love Bram and what he does. And then Spins now gives you data that you couldn't beg, borrow, or steal another way. You literally yeah. can't, right? Like, like people have offered to give away livers, like, you, you know, like, hey, buddy, can you send me the report? I'll pay you 500 bucks for a sneak look at it. You can't get it, right? So I feel like these two things, plus being able to keep your life organized all of a sudden becomes a really powerful combo, right? So I, agree. Um, I, I didn't they actually share. know about this. They don't I, I think you told me about it, but I, I didn't remember it. It's super cool. Yeah. They, and they don't yeah. share data. Yeah. Like the, this is the first time they've put together a partnership like this. We went back on back and forth for a while. We really had to explain to them what we're trying to do. We have a number of different calls, number of different people. And then, you know, we ended up signing the partnership and, and, you know, we're going to test it out for a year. If it works, if it adds value at the end of the day, um, to people that are using the platform. Awesome. If it doesn't, you know, I'm doesn't, sure it'll be, I'm right? sure it'll be well received. It's hard to get, and most little brands don't understand the data anyway. So if you get some high level twice a year, more than enough, just to get you understanding spins will do well with this because at the end of the day once you understand how to read the data what you're looking at you'll buy it it's not that that expensive per se it's expensive if you're a million you know a five hundred thousand dollar brand but if you're a million two million dollars really it's not data is kind of critical right yeah, exactly and it's becoming more and more important that's yeah. just yeah you know when you think about you know, the capabilities of, of when you start going down the rabbit hole of building a software company, right? The, you can, you, you, it's a sandbox, so you can build whatever you want, right? So we're, you know, you, you think about, you know, we were talking about a trade show coming up and then you think about the current trade show environment, right? And how you, you know, take your retailers around or they come to your, like, how are you organizing your notes and how are you actioning anything after? It's like, I've seen some of the brand's notepads after a show, it's insane. Right. It's scribbled. It's, it's chaotic. Yeah, There's business cards falling around. It's, and everybody's doing it different. Some people on their phone and yeah. then you got a, maybe a brand ambassador doing it. You know, what if you could you utilize a software platform that already has your entire business on it. And then you just tack in like a trade show environment to that. Right. And then, you know, the, the, you know, you start thinking about e-commerce and you think about, um, you know, the different opportunities with, um, how products are merchandised on e-commerce versus in-store and the amount of information that you need versus in-store and, you know, linking those and, you know, the opportunities are endless, right? So it's it's exciting to be where we're at today, but I can already see a few years down the road of, of the connectivity. Like we want retailers using it. We want distributors using it, right? We've already shown it to a few retailers and they're like, yeah, imagine I could just go on here and like access all my stuff. Like that would be really sweet. I like and it for the like, distributors too. Yeah. I like it for you to talk, actually communicate better with your own distributor. Like, because a lot of times you're going via a broker and then, you know what I mean? Like you got, it's the layers even that you can potentially start cutting out, not you're cutting out people, but just talking with less layers or at least layering in more people, but into one spot, not this, you know, shit that we're going all over the place. Boy. I love Good. it. Thank I you like for it jumping too. on. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me. This yeah. is a lot of fun. Anytime. Yeah. yeah. And then we're looking forward to having you on the podcast for real. But uh, this was a fast thought. We, oh, yeah. We've been talking about that for a year and a bit, too. So I, I give yeah, up on yeah, him. Yeah. No, no, no. He's coming on. He'll, he'll come on. It's all good. For sure.